Hey everybody and welcome back to Super Comic Fun Time where we're still continuing on with our daily vlog. I want to get back to doing some of my more traditional reviews soon and I will do that with uh, one of the books I'm talking about today, maybe two uh, in the coming days. But since we just finished Free Comic Book Day, I wanted to devote this week to going through the books as I read them. So I'm putting aside my other book, uh, my nonfiction book, Cyclomancy to uh, read. So I'm mostly trying to read the free ones, but I'm also reading some of the ones that I paid for. So I'm going to talk about them all. But um, each day we're going to go through a little bit more. Now, the first one I'm going to talk about is one I couldn't get very far in, and that's Barriers. Now, I started reading this, and I was really kind of looking, liking it, and I was thinking, oh, I'm going to, like, I, I don't have a poll list yet because I mostly read old stuff, you know, got all the old stuff or the, uh, the omnibuses. So, but I thought, oh, this is one I wouldn't mind putting on my poll list. It's like, you know, okay, there's like um, graphic details, like, you know, but the artwork is beautiful. So hopefully I, I'm going to try to like avoid the horse's head, which is kind of gross. But I mean, the artwork is beautiful. One thing, it is kind of annoying to have to flip it like this. It's kind of like in a calendar format. Um, not sure what it adds to the story, but uh, the artwork is beautiful. And I was getting into it, but then um, it turns out that it's partly in Spanish and I can't read Spanish. I thought, oh, this would be great. I'd like to learn Spanish. Um, it'd be fun to try to decode it, but I, I, who has time for that? So I just decided I had to put this one aside after like I flipped through a few pages and I could not figure out what was going on with the the Spanish part of the book. And uh, I don't know, I think it's a shame. It looks like it's a good book. I, I think I would enjoy it if I could read it. So I'm gonna put that one aside. Okay, next we're gonna jump to one I paid for, which was Action Comics 999. Now this one um, is pretty good. The artwork is very good. You know, you can see they're getting, they're priming you for issue 1000, which will be the next one after this. Uh, this is more or less a family drama, like Superman is off, Oh, there it goes. Superman is off doing something, and um, uh, what's his name? Uh, General Lane, Lois's father, is coming to dinner. And, and you know, at first, like when I, you know, not reading action comics, uh, I just at first, like when he showed up here, I thought it was an older Superman, and I thought maybe him and. But then I kept remembering, like um, John keeps saying, uh, "Oh, uh, Grandpa." But for whatever reason, it wasn't registering with me. And I thought Superman had, like, because a lot of General Lane's arguments seem like a bit like Superman's. This kind of surprised me because Superman is wearing an oxygen or he's wearing an air tank or something over uh, his head. See, what's going on here is, like, well, this family dinner is going on. Superman is uh, averting a meteorite from falling into the earth or something. And it turns out there's these minerals inside that are really hard and he needs for something. And so, yeah, so then like, you know, a lot of it's just family drama, but I think uh, the really, the thing that really saved this story for me is like after, I don't want to give it away, it's still on the shelves, you can go pick up 999. And it was kind of a tearjerker for me. It's like, um, you know, um, the, the roles are reversed a little bit in that Clark saves a day. And maybe that's all I should say about it. I don't know. If you have read it, let me know what you thought. I think it was pretty good. I, I kind of enjoyed it. And maybe I should like try to get a fewer. Uh, this was more or less a standalone story, but it hints at um, that things had been wild in action comics recently. And Superman mentions having been on in another dimension or something. Not sure what was going on there, but it was a fun book. Enjoying a uh, double IPA tonight. So um, the next one is the Free Comic Book Day Avengers. Now, I, I really don't know that much about Free Comic Book Day because, well, last year, well, this is my, my first introduction to it was in uh, 2015 when I came out of uh, Avengers 2 and there were a couple of Marvel Comics free comic book days waiting outside of the IMAX for, for us. And so that was the very first time, you know, I wasn't totally back into comic books at the time. I had gotten the Nightfalls 
at, you know, the, the three volume soft cover set of Nightfall after um, how you say uh, The Dark Knight Rises came out. And that's my favorite movie of the trilogy. I, I appreciate everything that happens in um, all of the movies, really, but I just think just everything that happens in uh, Rises just. I mean, it's the perfect ending to, you know, I'm really glad they kept it as a trilogy. Anyways, I, I, you know, so I got a lot of Batman books then, and I wasn't really interested in Marvel at all, but I would be reading in Amazon. I think Superior Spider-Man had like some of the uh, trades out at that time. And, you know, the whole idea of Dr. Octopus taking over Peter Parker's body and becoming Superior, that sounded like fun to me. And then eventually I did get that on, uh, on comiXology and I read the whole run of that and I thought that was really good. So that's, uh, so yeah, so it was really like, uh, I, I had like the, it was like, like, like a sputtering start where I got a lot of Batman books and then I got a lot of Superman books too because I really didn't read DC superheroes and so I got like all of the death of Superman books and, and such. And uh, then I got like um, other classics like, the uh, Ellen Moore book, um, Whatever Happened to the Man of Tomorrow, and the Batman book by, I think, was it Grant Morrison? No, it was Neil Gaiman, right? Neil Gaiman wrote um, the Batman book where it's sort of like the, the last Batman story, and I enjoyed those a lot. But it wasn't until I picked up the three comic book day books uh, after seeing Avengers 2, and it was really Avengers 2 that I just loved that movie. That was you know, I thought it was so great. I know, like, some people, like, I listen to podcasts, comic book podcasts, and everybody has these criticisms, but I thought it was, you know, <laughs> it was, like, way better than the first one. I love the first one, but I thought Avengers 2 raised the bar. And um, and so, yeah, maybe I just don't know how to enjoy movies, but I loved it. So, anyways, um, uh, you know, there were the two free comic book day books and like one was uh, New Avengers and I thought that one was kind of a kid's book and it didn't really interest me that much and it was like, you know, I guess it was uh, Ms. Marvel and Miles Morales Spider-Man and uh, a young Nova were brought on to, the, and it was annoying. It was an annoying story because, they go, oh, we're screwing up, we're screwing up. And it's like, oh, you didn't screw up after all. And uh, yeah, so, and then I thought, well, it's just for kids. I, I can I can let that go. And I think the only, then there was an Inhuman story, which was okay. It didn't, I didn't really remember who the Inhumans were at that point. And I only still vaguely remember them from, from when I read as a kid. And, um, Probably my favorite one from that session was uh, they did a Marvel Comics and uh, is it called Attack on Titan, the manga book where, where like the giants are attacking Earth or whatever. And I thought that was really good. And then the one with um, that was leading into Secret Wars, that was okay. It was, you know, kind of gave you, to me it was just a synopsis. None of them were great, you know. I would say this this comes closest to being a really good, uh, comic book story and I you know I read this yesterday and then I saw Captain Cummings video today and he was talking about how he felt he felt this was consequential so like yeah I was making my excuse that the only free comic book day I participated in until this one was the one two three years ago I the, the next year I went to my friend's comic book shop and uh, the way it works is like he he just opened up and he only sells, uh, he sells collectibles and um, older comic books. So he put together like this nice package and I only went to one store that year. I don't know why, but you know, I was like, again, you, when you're coming into something, it's, it's going slowly. And then last year um, there was a, a family uh, issue I needed to take care of on free comic book day. And it was like, it was so frustrating. I go, I could go over to the shop, you know, my friend's shop and, Anyway, so I this uh, this story is basically like um, Black Panther is summoned to Asgard, and um, we get some backstory. I guess there's a Avengers story going on right now, and uh, and I guess it's already started. So maybe I should try to find that book and pick it up. And uh, apparently there was a celestial that. So spoilers, a celest, you know, this is a pre book, so you should be able to to find it someplace. A celestial came to Earth and like um, 
the Black Panthers were already a thing a million years ago. I guess it was like a million years ago when this happened. And so like uh, Odin is explaining what happened to, to T'Challa. And uh, that's pretty much the story, but it does give you a lot of uh, back, you know, like Loki's in there, you know, and uh, Loki has something to do with either he's gotten the power of the celestial or he's brought it back to life. Not sure exactly, but it was a pretty good story. And then um, uh, Black Panther comes back to Earth and assembles the Avengers to to take care of business, TCB, baby, TCB. Then the next story was a Captain America story. And um, yeah, this one, I, I, I don't know if there's like Captain America clones, but there's these guys with flags on their faces. And it reminds me of, uh, and I can't remember if I remember a character like this when I was a kid. There was like one who kind of popped pills, right? Like red, white, and blue. But I only really remember vaguely, only vaguely one story with that character. So I don't know if that's supposed to be him or these are clones of Captain America. But um, but yeah, it's got these themes going on. Like, you know, Captain America, uh, his view is like, America is right because America is good. And like, there seems to be this other faction where America, is good because America is strong, something like that. There's like some interplay like that going on. Of course, I read this yesterday and I <coughs> I, I found the uh, T'Challa story much more uh, interesting, but you know, there's good artwork in both of these. So this is a pretty good uh, book of the free ones I've read, which I think I've only read two so far. We're gonna get into the second one in a minute. So it was, it was good. What I did, like I should probably explain my process a little bit is, um, after I got all the books, they were in a big stack. Uh, the first night I read uh, one of the books I bought. And um, and then, you know, yesterday was just kind of this lazy day. I felt sleepy all day. So I just took the whole stack of books and I kind of laid around and I flipped through them without really reading them. And then I settled on, you know, I don't even know why the ones I settled on. Like, this is really the first one I wanted to read, but I didn't have the energy to read it yesterday. So... Uh, this one I read today, and I would say this one is very good. Now, um, if you don't know who the Meta Baron is, he's a character created by, um, uh, what's his name, Yadorowski, uh Alejandro uh, Yadorowski, who's a very famous Mexican filmmaker. He's got some, like, they're real doozies. They're not family films at all. There's El Topo, which was credited as being the first midnight film and John Lennon saw it. And I think he, he contributed some money. And then um, eventually, like, I think probably Yadorowski made movies after this, but probably the Holy Mountain is his masterpiece. And George Harrison, I think was involved in funding it and he wanted to star in it, but uh, Yadorowski didn't want people being distracted by uh, a beetle being in this movie. But then he kind of like hired this other actor who was a problem guy, you know, I guess he did drugs and stuff, but he, you know, he still got a pretty good performance out of him. It's, it's a great movie. Again, totally like, you know, kind of beyond adult fare, you know, I mean, very mature themes. And so um, what happened is after that, Yadorowski wanted to make, Dune, and there's a movie that came out a few years ago called Yadorowski's Dune, and I guess even though the movie never got made, his script, the people who've seen it, they were so influenced by it that it kind of influenced filmmakings, uh, filmmakings, filmmaking since the 70s, and since, you know, he like, um, since he was working out in the, uh, in the 70s, Orson Welles was still alive and Salvador Dali was still alive. He wanted Salvador Dali to be the emperor in that movie. And he completely changed the movie. Like in, the, the, in his movie, I mean, he changed the book. In his movie, the planet was going to sort of come alive and be this thing that traveled through the galaxy, like kind of enlightening other planets or something like that. It's been a while since I've seen that movie. But since he couldn't make that movie, he took some key concepts from that and made the Inkle. And so that's where I would start with Yadorowski if you have any interest at all. Um, you might be, you know, if you have uh, Amazon Prime, uh, you might be able to read the first part for free to see if it's something you'd be into. Uh, again, it's mature themes. Uh, even though there's a lot of sex and degeneracy in there, the, 
they're story elements. They aren't the point of the story. So it's like, you know, it's not porn or anything, but there are things that could be considered pornographic ele elements. I almost said elephants. <laughs> could you imagine? <laughs> oh, cheers. So, um, so yeah, I would start, you know, I don't know that I would start with the Meta Baron. I think they do a pretty good job in this book. Like, this is a long book. It's, um, let me see, there's a couple of um, little inserts in here that explain some of Yadorowski's stuff, but the story is like around 23 pages. So I guess that's average. It's around 23 pages long. Um, it's beautiful artwork. This is different than the Inkle. The Inkle was originally, the art was by uh, an artist known as Mobius. And uh, eventually Mobius went to work on the fourth element and some elements of the Inkle ended up the fourth element, the fifth element ended up in there and Yadorowski ended up suing, but nothing could be proven uh, because, you know, Mobius working on it kind of um, muddied the waters. So uh, nothing really came of it. But just look at this opening shot if I can get it to focus. I mean, so here's the Meta Baron. He's underwater. So you've got... Yeah, got, it's a little hard because this is so bright, it's like throwing off my cheap web camera. But then you get the face here, and you have the Meta Baron coming out. So, like, this this artwork is uh, more computerized than in the Inkle. It's it's very realistic. Um, but, uh, that, you know, that but one thing is, like, you know, just the way the colors are, it's like nothing really pops out. Like, if you look, certain things do pop out, but it's... I think it would be better to tone down something. I'm not sure what. I'm not an artist. I I just envy artists. Um, so so yeah. There's like there's like one scene in here. Now the basic story here is this takes place. Uh, I guess this is part of book three. It's confusing to me because here it says book one is coming out in July 2018, and I'm gonna have to get that uh, all new SC trade. But here it says book three. So what I'm guessing is like, I don't know. I really don't know. But uh, so this takes place is like the, the universe, the Meta Baron is, is, is coming to an end. And there's this strange metal uh, that he's encountered. And then he ends up in this other dimension on this planet that's kind of made of this metal. And, um, and so, yeah. Uh, this was a really good book, and I'm talking too much about it because this is one I want to do a full-on review of. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just find this one bit of art that. So like here, I think this would have worked so much better if the camera had panned a little and kind of made this like a little more full because like everything is just so one color. Then you got this nice shock of red here, and you know. Uh, also, I'm used to reading a lot of stuff on the uh, on the tablet, and of course the tablet just puts everything so nice, but it, a lot of times it'll like cut out things that are just art. And so like here, I think this just move it, uh, move, move the focus a little bit. Cause I, then, then I'm looked, I, I went back and I looked and there was red in the book in other places, but you never get to see exactly what it's, uh, I guess it's just a plant. I, at first I thought it was like a moon or something, but I, you know, that, that part was very good. I, I liked that a lot, but, but yeah, so, Again, saying too much. That was one I was going to do a full-on review of. I've also read, I think I'm about halfway through Action 1000. And this is kind of like just a tribute issue. There's no one story in here. I haven't made it to the Brian Mac Michael Bendis one. The first one um, was called, I'm just going to read from the book now, From the City That Has Everything. Um, this one reminded me of the Grant Morrison Batman book. Um, was was it called Whatever Happened to the Cape Crusader? Something like that. I can't remember what that book was called, but this one reminded me a lot of that. And I liked it pretty well. Uh, the Never Ending Battle, I forgot what that one was about. Uh, I think I liked it though. It was good enough. Now this was like something, this is like in the first story that I did like, but I just like the feet look weird there and that, that kind of continued on. Um, lots of weird stuff kind of happens in this book, but it's supposed to. Uh, I mean, this first story. Um, 
So yeah, I haven't got to the Brian Michael Bendis one yet. Oh yeah, the second one is like that. Uh, Superman is explaining why he, he's late for dinner. It was kind of an interesting story. Uh, it kind of went through the years of you know um, all of the major eras of Superman. And so yeah, uh, so far all of the stories have been they, they've been both kind of inconsequential and still entertaining. So I think this is a fairly good book. And if you're a comic book fan, you probably want to get yourself a copy if you can. And then uh, this book from uh, C.J. Stendhal. I've read the first two stories in here. I say it's really good. I'm going to do a full review when I finish it. I might not finish it until sometime next week because I want to, you know, I just like noticed I've got all of these books to go through and most of these are free comic book day books. So I think tomorrow I'm going to put Lady, Mac Mac what is it called? Mechanica on the list. I'm going to read that one. And I'm not sure what other one I'm going to read. Um, I might pick the uh, Doctor Who one because that one looked kind of fun too. So, <coughs> So those are probably be the two I talk about tomorrow. And so, yeah, like I said, I'm going to do a, a full review of this one. I really like it a lot so far. I just read the first two. This is the first thing I read after Free Comic Book Day. I read the first story, then I read the second story on uh, Sunday. And um, it's like part of me just wants to read the whole thing at once, but I think it's better to, like, focus on the free comic books and then do that one as its own separate video. And I will hopefully have – Finished it sometime next week, and so maybe the week after, I will go ahead and do a, a full review video on that, not just a vlog, and maybe make a little movie, you know, just pick up some scenes from there like I did with If and, uh, and the Haunted House one, the House of Secrets. So anyways, thank you guys. Love you. Everything is great. I feel good about the channel, um, and I just... I just feel very positive for the future. And so we're going to continue doing this. And I am going to say Super Comic Fun Time out. Remember to like and share. Talk to you later. Bye.